Hello and welcome to the Rekt Capital channel and welcome to today's update on Bitcoin. We're also going to be looking at a few market leaders, specifically Ethereum and Litecoin. We're going to look at Ethereum USD and Litecoin USD, but we're also going to look at Ethereum BTC and Litecoin BTC. So without further ado, let's dive right in to today's update. Yesterday we spoke about Bitcoin and we spoke about the bear flag that we might be seeing on its uh, particular price action at this time. So what we are seeing at the moment is Bitcoin's bear flag from yesterday, its price action from yesterday. So this is the price action on Bitcoin today. What we can see at the moment is that the higher lows are being respected. They are being tested at the moment for support. So buyers really do need to step in if we want to avoid a breakdown. Of course, before we saw a few wicks like this in the past. So long downward wicks, just trying to tap into that pool of liquidity down below into lower price regions, really 7,850 roughly speaking. So if we see something of the same, I expect price to maybe revisit this demand area if we do indeed get those wicks. but. After all, what we're looking for is will this series of high lows actually hold up? Will buyers step in at these particular levels? Because of course, if they don't, we will see a breakdown first to this green area. And if that area doesn't hold, then we're probably going to see a retest of the range low of the monthly macro range. So this is essentially what I was talking about yesterday. We were looking at the macro perspective yesterday in a little bit more depth. We were talking about the minus 44% retrace that Bitcoin's going through at the moment. And we compare that to the retrace prior to halving one in uh, 2012. So halving one was in November 2012, but we actually saw a 45% retrace a few months prior to that halving. And I was essentially talking about that we might see the same thing happening now. But at the same time, this is the counter argument. This bear flag is the counter argument to that because if this bear flag does indeed break down, then we'll have to see if this bottom range low will actually hold up for Bitcoin. But because Bitcoin isn't a bear flag, of course a bear flag implies bearish sentiment. There is a bearish bias to bear flags, so they do break down to the downside more often than not, which is why yesterday I tweeted that the fear and greed index is a good predictor for Bitcoin's price reversal, especially if it's at extreme levels of fear. And I actually talked about this in one of my articles and we'll look into this in a bit more detail in just a moment. But my opinion essentially is, is the fear and greed index low enough? Is there enough fear in the market? So in my article, I actually talked about how the fear and greed index was actually 13 at the time. And that's when we saw a nice Bitcoin bounce. But at the moment we actually have 40 and 40 isn't really that low when it comes to people being fearful. Of course, there is a bit of fear in the market. There is a bit of stress at these levels. And of course, the fact that we're seeing this bear flag being tested, well, I do expect a lot of uh, fervent emotional reactions to occur once we do see this uh, breakdown, especially if it breaks down from the green area. We're probably going to see a lot of panic selling, of course, in Bitcoin, but as well across the market in other altcoins. So there isn't that much fear. That's my point. And we have to buy fear, or at least that's what an investor called John Templeton used to say, that you have to buy fear because essentially speaking, that's how you can profit from the market. Well, at the moment, there isn't that much fear to be bought. So to give you an idea as to what I'm thinking about in terms of the fear and greed index and its relation to Bitcoin's price and its potential price reversals, here is my article, how to use the fear and greed index to predict increases in Bitcoin's price. And of course, I wrote this article back in August, but the principles remain the same because after all, emotions move markets, greed drives price up and fear drives price down. So. It is an interesting read. I enjoyed writing it. But of course, as we spoke about, John Templeton invest at the point of maximum pessimism. And if we just look at the fear and greed index at the moment, 40, there isn't maximum pessimism. There is a bit of pessimism. Don't get me wrong. There is a bit of stress and fear, but it isn't really that maximum pessimism that really feels like a good uh, financial opportunity, at least in my opinion. 
And this is, of course, what I mentioned here, because the greater the fear, the larger the opportunity for profit. Now, of course, in yesterday's video, I did mention that there may be an adherence to previous market cycles. And that's all well and good as long as the monthly macro range low holds. So until then, there's no reason to be overly bearish on Bitcoin. But of course, we need to bear in mind that there is a bear flag on Bitcoin and there isn't that maximum pessimism that John Templeton likes to call it at the moment. But as we move through the article, 13 is what the fear and greed index was in August and then we saw a bounce from Bitcoin. So the lower the fear levels, especially if it's extremely fearful, the better the financial opportunities. So if we do uh, zoom in over here, you can see that with every extremely fearful level that we saw for Bitcoin's price, or at least the fear and greed index, these are the lowest points for the fear and greed index. So the fearful levels are one, two, three, four, and so on. And then we saw a reversal in the index to the upside. And how has this translated into Bitcoin's price? Well, here are the particular figures, or at least the price chart we saw. Number one, when we saw extreme fear in the fear and greed index, we saw a nice price reaction to the upside for Bitcoin. The same with number two. Number three was much less powerful than the previous two market reactions. And the same can be said about four. But of course, all these market reactions differ from one another and they differ from one another quite considerably. Here is how all of these reversals in the fear and greed index have translated into Bitcoin's price. Number one was 100%. So that was the greatest uh, well, we had 314% in number 12. So this is essentially where uh, the, this was the higher low after the mid-December bottom for the bear market, for the previous bear market. So of course, we did see a nice increase since then. It's essentially the new bull cycle for Bitcoin. So that's the article in a nutshell. If you'd like to read it, I'm gonna link it in the description below. But essentially speaking, Whenever we see the fear and greed index reach the green level, extremely fearful levels, that's usually when Bitcoin tends to either have a relief rally to the upside or an entire swing, or even an entire bull cycle as we saw with the 300% rally for Bitcoin in the 12th uh, particular moment in its chart. So this is the fear and greed index at the moment. It's 40. There is no extreme fear. There is no point of maximum pessimism. And I just wonder whether we need to see more fear come into the market before we see a price reversal for Bitcoin. And that's essentially that the question I'm going to leave with you uh, for today when it comes to Bitcoin as we move on to Ethereum. Because if we look at Ethereum on the weekly chart, it's in a channel at the moment. It's in a $160, $360 channel. It's a macro channel that's been uh, quite good in terms of predicting its uh, price reversals from where it starts to where it moves. And this is essentially a chart from May 11th where we saw a break back in to the macro channel. And then a few weeks later, this is essentially the chart uh, from the tweet. But a few weeks later, we saw a nice return to the top of the channel. So if we move to the next chart, we can see that this is a swing from 160 to 360. This is essentially the charts that I use in my Ethereum thread. And I was just updating Ethereum as it progressed throughout its journey. So it is a long thread. Um, it's one that I tracked from 160 to 360. And the reason that this matters at the moment is that Ethereum is still in its macro weekly channel. And that's a good thing but it's not following through on its fractal because this is the fractal that I uh, painted for it earlier to go from green to red to green to red. And we did see that half of this scenario materialized into reality that from green to red, but not from green to red. Because at the moment, of course, we are seeing a higher low in terms of um, Bitcoin's or at least Ethereum's price relative to 160. So this is a higher low respective to this price point over here. But at the moment, we're not seeing strong enough market reaction. And in fact, we saw a wick to 160. So at the moment, Ethereum is within this triangle and it is testing the uptrend line. It's testing these higher lows quite significantly. 
it is threatening to roll over at the moment. But what I want to see above all else, even if this higher low breaches, I want it to hold this macro channel. And as long as it does that, as long as it continues to do that, it might still have a chance of continuing upwards within this macro channel. But at the same time, if we're going to see weaker and weaker bounces from 160, uh, we didn't see a bounce from 160 over here, but we did over here. If we see lower highs keep on happening against 160, then that probably means that buyers aren't as strong as before. And this macro channel could potentially be void. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. I'm going to be looking for the bottom of the macro channel to just keep on holding. And let's see how Ethereum starts to bounce from there, especially once it breaks through these higher lows. Moving on to Ethereum BTC. It's interesting because it had an exponential rally and then it had a very strong retrace. But for the time being, or at least for the past few weeks really for most of October it's just been kind of grinding to the upside and this is generally price action that I don't really like because it is moving it is climbing but if anything were to happen if there were to be a strong Bitcoin downside move then this would probably disrupt Ethereum it would disrupt a lot of altcoins as well so this kind of climbing by itself, it kind of shows weakness. It shows that buyers aren't really that strong. They aren't being too keen and putting their money into Ethereum, putting their money into the market to push price up. So we are seeing this sort of slow, gradual grinding to the upside. And it isn't really a sign of strength for me, especially if we're seeing lower highs over here. Because essentially what these lower highs show to us is that sellers were very happy to sell over here. And once they got the chance, when Bitcoin or at least Ethereum reversed to the upside over here, once they got the chance to offload their bags, they did. But they did so at a much lower price than these sellers over here. So essentially speaking, the second sellers didn't have the chance, or at least they didn't want to sell when Ethereum reached these levels. But once Ethereum reached these levels over here, the second sellers were thinking to themselves, right, well, I miss an opportunity to sell. I will take the next opportunity to sell if and when I get it. And of course, this is exactly what's happening, which is essentially the psychological story of this lower high. So now that we've spoken a bit about the lower high psychology, we still see some demand at this particular region. But of course, there is a volume gap in the volume profile right over here. So a breakdown from here will quickly, swiftly lead Ethereum BTC to around these regions over here, where there is quite a lot of historically transacted volume. And it's very important that Ethereum just holds this demand zone over here, because if it doesn't, it'll probably break down and the fall will be quite sharp because there are only sparse nodes here on the volume profile. There's even a volume gap over here. There's a volume gap over here. And of course, there's a lot of demand at around these regions. But having said that, this in itself is quite a sizable volume gap. So having said that, I'm not going to be a buyer for Ethereum BTC anytime soon unless we breach past this red supply zone. But of course, if we keep seeing these lower highs, then there's no reason for me to believe that people won't want to sell Ethereum BTC at lower and lower and lower levels until we actually see a breakdown because this could even become a descending triangle, especially if we don't see that market reaction from this level in particular, the base of the descending triangle, should that descending triangle happen, of course. So I will be keeping my eye on this one. But of course, it is looking a bit overextended at the moment. Moving on to Litecoin USD, it does look like it wants to roll over. It's not really producing any market reaction from this level over here, especially since there aren't many buyers. There is a volume gap on the volume profile over here. There aren't many buyers until maybe $49.70. Uh, $49 but there are even more buyers at $44.50. So. Once we see Litecoin roll over from here, because there is a weakening support, uh, price isn't really bouncing from here. Uh, if we see that confirmation, because we have seen Wix from here before, we've seen Wix uh, searching for that liquidity. And we even see that this Wix went all the way to around this level. So that's where we see 
quite a few nodes. Of course, these nodes change in real time, so those nodes weren't the nodes from before, but roughly speaking, there is that demand. There is that sentiment that people wanted to buy there, and of course, this long downward wick is a testament to that, pretty much. But if we see a candle close below this level, then we'll see Litecoin retrace and reach one of these demand levels. The stronger the demand, the better for Litecoin to have a bounce. And this isn't that strong of a demand region for Litecoin, but I want to see a breakdown from here first before we can talk further and see what Litecoin wants to do with its price action. And moving on to the last chart, here's Litecoin BTC. At the moment, we're seeing higher lows for Litecoin, but we are seeing a breakdown from these higher lows. So especially if we retest this uh, higher low, this blue diagonal as a resistance, then we'll probably see a rejection from here and some dwindling deeper into this blue region. Now, what is this blue region? Now, this is a very important region. It's been a region of reversal for Litecoin in the past. We've seen very sharp market reactions every time we've seen a wick into this region. This is essentially a very good demand zone for Litecoin. And I've been talking about Litecoin on my Twitter every now and then because I am looking at the macro moves. So I don't update the thread quite as much because I am looking at it on the weekly. But in any case, I still update it, of course. But as we can see over here, the blue region isn't providing that sharp market reaction that I used to in the past. Before, all it would take would be a wick into this blue region and we'd see a sharp reversal to the upside. But we're not really seeing that over here. So Litecoin will likely have to delve deep or at least delve deeper into this blue region to summon the buy interest from market participants to summon that demand so that I can enjoy a reversal once again. But let's see how this higher low turns out. At the moment, it does want to break down. It is threatening to test this high low as a resistance. And once we get that bearish confirmation, then we'll probably see further downside for Litecoin. And having said that, that's just about it for today's episode. We looked into Bitcoin's price action, of course, referencing yesterday's update because we did speak a lot about its market cycles as well as its particular price predicament within the bear flag at the moment. But we also spoke about Ethereum and Litecoin and we looked at the USD and BTC pairings. At the moment, these major players aren't looking too strong and neither is Bitcoin. So we do need to have that confirmation because whatever Bitcoin does, of course, we'll see Ethereum and Litecoin and other altcoins follow suit as well. So just looking at the charts of Ethereum and Litecoin, we can actually see that there is quite a lot of bearish confluence. And if they have to break down from their respective regions and accelerate to a certain region, so for Litecoin, that would be to lower regions within the blue area, or for Ethereum, that would probably be closer to the bottom of the macro channel then Bitcoin would have to break down from its bear flag for that to happen. Because if Bitcoin breaks down from its bear flag, it will accelerate the movements, the bearish movements that the coins are kind of signaling and trying to foreshadow ahead of time. So if Bitcoin breaks down, we'll see the same in altcoins and we'll see these moves become accelerated. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it informative. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Bitcoin's price action at the moment. What's going to happen? Will this bear flag indeed materialize or are we going to actually see a bounce from the high low to maintain its bullish tendency and bullish momentum? Or do you think that this bear flag will break down and we'll see an acceleration in the bearish momentum for Ethereum and Litecoin for them to reach their certain respective levels. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon.